Our 2019 dividend portfolio beat the market, and I'm back with a portfolio for massive cash flow and returns in 2020. I'm listing out the best 10 dividend stocks to buy right now and why these stocks are going higher. We're talking best dividend stocks for 2020 today on Let's Talk Money. Beat that. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, our 2019 stock challenge was the most popular series on the channel with more than 150,000 people tracking that portfolio of 10 dividend stocks all year long. That portfolio ended up beating the market with a 30% return and four of the stocks producing returns of 50% and more. Now this year, the idea is to make the dividend portfolio a little bit more dynamic. So I'm picking three stocks each month and then gonna be tracking those all year long. But I also wanted to give you 10 ideas to help build your portfolio, 10 great dividend picks that are not only gonna diversify your investments, but also give it that cash flow and the return that you only get from dividend stocks. Now I'm gonna be pulling some of these from our stock sector series. That was where we covered the best five stocks in each of the 11 sectors, along with a couple that could surprise everyone. I'll link to that stock sector series in the video description below. So make sure you check that out for how I pick these stocks and, and what to watch for in each sector. Now, coatings and plastics giant Dow, ticker DOW, makes the list with its 5.2% dividend yield and what could be a turnaround 2020 story. The sales picture for Dow and just that broader plastics theme hasn't been good. A revenue fell across every segment over the last year, but it looks like 2020 could bring a rebound. The company is in a major restructuring and cost savings push, having cut already $1.36 billion so far. Uh, most of its 2020 and 2020 debt is paid off, so there's a lot of financial flexibility here to take the shares higher. Now, shares trade for 15 times earnings, with the profits expected 8% higher over the next year. Now, earnings are still tough to predict here after Dow split from that Dow DuPont, the larger company, earlier in the year, and the company beat expectations by 24% last quarter. Analysts have the stock at a target of $48 per share at the low end to a high of around $65 a share over the next year. This is a solid dividend yield, and I think a good opportunity to grab this one before that business environment improves in, in plastics and the broader market and brings other investors back. For more than 100 years, Bunge has been a leader in global agribusiness with pretty much everything from farm to consumer. Bunge is really at the center of everything agriculture, okay? Buying commodities from farmers, then transporting them, uh, storing them, and selling to food processors. The company also processes some of its own oil seeds as well as its own business in sugar and fertilizers. Now, these shares pay a solid 3.5% dividend yield, but the market has not been kind to agriculture, really that whole industry, over the last couple of years. Activist investors took over in 2018 and started implementing a strategic plan, including a management shakeup, divesting some of those non-core businesses in the company, and potentially more moves to unlock shareholder value. Shares trade for 17 times earnings, though profits are expected 18% lower over the next year. This is one where the rest of the market has pretty much given up on Bunch, but I think it's missing the potential in that phase one trade deal that could represent higher ag buying. Increased ag purchases by China could mean a windfall for companies like Bunge and a surprise earnings on the upside. Analysts have price targets from $65 a share on the low end to $74 over the next year. Ventus, ticker VTR, is a leader in the healthcare REIT theme and pays an attractive 5.6% dividend yield. Now, Ventus owns 1,200 properties in North America and the UK with about 54% of that income coming from senior housing, about 27% from medical office space. I like this 21% of the portfolio here in triple net lease senior housing, which means the company is leasing out space to other senior care companies as well as operating its own properties. Now, the senior housing market has been tough for the last few years. There's no doubt that the aging population is driving demand, but companies have just built way too many properties in that lead up. Okay, you see here in the chart of property cons construction, that's the light blue line against demand or property absorption in dark blue. You see how the construction starts have been way above the demand really since 2012, but the bright spot here is that it looks like this might be turning around. Senior housing starts were at their lowest level in nine years in the third quarter of last year, and demand is at its highest level on record. So even as the company waits for that senior housing market to improve, the medical office environment is very strong and has a 92% occupancy rate across its portfolio of properties. Now, management expects to report $3.83 per share in funds from operations this year, which means the stock is trading for right around 14.7 times FFO. 
Now the company pays 82% of FFO to cover that dividend, so a little on the high side, but this one could be a great turnaround play. The company has produced a 9% annual growth in FFO since 2001 and nine consecutive years of dividend growth even in that weak senior housing environment. Now, Ventus is widely covered with 10 analysts providing price targets here from $56 a share on the low end to a high of $72 a share. For Verizon Communications, ticker VZ is my favorite pure play on that telecom space with a 4% dividend yield. Now, I know a lot of you in the nation just love AT&T, but it's got so many things going on right now from, from the Time Warner acquisition and direct TV uh, and just that streaming war that has just begun. Besides trying to fight those streaming wars, there are a lot of balls up in the air right now and I think something is going to get dropped. Now Verizon on the other hand is just much more of a pure play on that 5G story with 70% with of revenue coming from wireless. It still has some fixed line operations which are about 12% of revenue and, and then those enterprise services make up the other 10% of sales. Now, wireless customer growth has been strong last year. Uh, the company just reported its strongest third quarter in five years, adding over 400,000 customers. Now, sales per account is also growing, though, doubling from a year ago. Now, shares are trading for just over 12 times earnings, which are expected to grow 2.9% over the next year. But look at this in this chart. They could add another percent or two just on management's history of beating those expectations. Analysts have a low target on the shares at $55 with an upside to $70 per share on the high end. And remember, this is on top of that dividend yield. Increasing digital ad spending should help the interpublic group, ticker IPG, as the fourth largest ad company in the world. The 2018 acquisition of data solutions provider Axiom helped expand IPG into that digital market and data. Uh, shares have been flat for the better part of a few years and, and some significant customer losses la last year, in 2017 actually, held the company back. But things turned around in 2019 and are looking better for 2020. Shares trade for just 11.4 times earnings, which are expected flat over the next year, but again, are likely going to be a few percent higher given management's history of beating expectations. There are only two analysts covering the shares here, so so tough to read anything into this chart, but a low target of $23 a share and $26 at the high end. That's on top of the 4% dividend yield, and this could be the surprise stock of 2020. Now, this next one is going to be one of the big surprises here. Kraft Heinz, ticker KHC, and its 4.9% dividend yield. Now, I've actually warned investors against Kraft Heinz since starting this channel, and yes, even used it as the poster child for a bad balance sheet in the past. But I'm calling it now. Okay, shares are down almost 60% since that 2015 listing, and there's a lot to like about this stock going forward. Kraft cut its dividend in late 2018, which absolutely destroyed the shares, but now it's paying just 54% of its earnings to cover that payout. That's supporting cash flow, helping it to pay down some of that massive debt that the private equity put on the, the company and stay competitive in this market. The company has $2.3 billion in balance sheet cash, is the third largest food and beverage manufacturer in North America, and let's not forget Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway still owns almost $11 billion in shares. That's more than 25% of the company, and you better believe that he's pushing for profits. Shares of Kraft trade for just 11.2 times earnings, making it one of the least expensive consumer staple stocks you're going to find. Earnings are expected to be down 13% over the next year, but margin gains reported in the last quarter make me believe that this could be one to beat on this number. This is a stock that analysts have all but given up on, with a low target of $23 a share and a high of just $34 each, right around where it's trading now. Now, I don't want you to think that this is going to be a magical ride higher either, though. Uh, investor sentiment is still negative on the stock, but there's a lot of value here for investors willing to, to have the patience to take a shot and hold on for the long term. Molson Coors Brewing, ticker TAP, is the fifth largest beer producer globally and offers a four and a quarter dividend yield. Now, as the fifth largest producer, that really doesn't give Molson much of a competitive advantage in that size, but it does have a top two position in, in most of its markets with strong brands like Coors and Miller. Now, this one has been dropping since 2016, but I like the potential here, not just for that long-term rebound, but also as a safety play in case the market takes a turn in 2020. Alcoholic beverages are just a classically counter-cyclical, meaning Molson should be able to count on stable sales even in an economic recession. Even against a rough couple of years though, the company has been able to increase its dividend and, and is only paying out 52% of its earnings, so, so still a very stable payout. Shares trade for 12.3 times earnings, though analysts are expecting a 7% decline in profits over the next four quarters. Now, management announced a turnaround plan last quarter, but I think this one could still become a target for activist investors and possibly even an acquisition. The brands still have a lot of value and the balance sheet is in good shape without a lot of debt. 
Analyst estimates range pretty widely here with $46 a share to a target of $66 each over the next year. Now, like most automotive companies, Tenneco, ticker TEN, has been caught up in the weak car buying market over the last few years. After the merger with Federal Mogul in late 2018, the company has now decided to split sometime this year, which means investors are gonna get two companies with this one. The emissions control business is going to separate with, with Federal Mogul's engine parts business for a leader in supplying manufacturers with those, with those original parts. Uh, the ride control business, on the other hand, is going to combine with the rest of Federal and Tenneco's aftermarket brands like, like Champion and Monroe for about half of the sales to manufacturers and half to that aftermarket sales group. I like these split up opportunities. Uh, what you often see is that each company is now better able to focus on its more narrow business model. Tenneco has still been able to maintain its dividend, now around 7.6% yield, though we'll have to see what happens in that split. You know, it's only about a third of expected earnings going into the dividend, so, so I expect both of these new companies to offer a solid yield. Earnings for the combined company are expected 24% lower over the next four quarters, but, but even that lower expectation here means the shares are only trading for four times earnings, so deep into value territory. This is another stock that analysts have pretty much given up on, with estimates ranging from just $8 a share to $14 over the next year. China Mobile, ticker CHL, is not only one of the strongest telecom plays, but also a great way to get that exposure to the Chinese consumer market. The telecom company controls 61% of the 4G market and 60% of the total wireless market in China. With 916 million subscribers, it's the largest telecom in the world. And despite this ginormous size already, it's still posting some astonishing growth. China Mobile also became the country's largest fixed broadband provider last year, controlling 42% of the market and accounting for 73% of all new broadband customers versus these other two telecoms, China Unicom and China Telecom. China is determined to be the leader in 5G. It's said so publicly and this is one of the first tech evolutions where it really has a chance to set that pace. That's going to open up a lot of opportunity for telecoms and the broader economy there in the country. Now, IoT smart connections among corporate clients increased 154% in the first half of last year to 384 million. That's already more than the entire population of the United States. Now, shares pay a 5% dividend yield, and the company pays out just 48% of profits to, to support that dividend, which is still solid, but obviously leaves a lot of room for growth. At a price to sales ratio of 1.6 times, which is well under that 2.1 times average over the last five years, the shares are a good deal here for new investors. The Alarian MLP ETF, ticker AMLP, is a holdover from our 2019 dividend portfolio. And I really like this one for a long-term investment. The fund invests across 32 companies in that midstream segment of the energy market, uh, that pipeline transportation refining and storage. Now, these companies charge a fee on volume, uh, so that transportation volume, so it's not all about the price of crude here. They get a special tax break if the majority of profits are passed through to investors, so you get an insanely high yield on this fund. The AMLP currently pays an 8.4% dividend yield, and look at it against some of these other high yield and cash flow options. More than twice the dividend yield compared to REITs, and four times the yield you get from that broader market. Check out the video to the right to see how many shares of these stocks to buy for cash flow every single month. It's one of the most common questions I get on the channel, and it's all right here. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.